and Clex Practice Exam for Skin and Integumentary Diseases Part 1. Question 1. When planning care for a male client with burns on the upper torso, which nursing diagnosis should take the highest priority? A. Ineffective airway clearance related to edema of the respiratory passages. B. Impaired physical mobility related to the disease process. C. Disturbed sleep pattern related to facility environment. D. Risk for infection related to breaks in the skin. Answer A. When caring for a client with upper torso burns, the nurse's primary goal is to maintain respiratory integrity. Therefore, option A should take the highest priority. Option B isn't appropriate because burns aren't a disease. Option C and D may be appropriate, but don't command a larger priority than option A because they don't reflect immediately life-threatening problems. Question 2. In a female client with burns on the legs, which nursing intervention helps prevent contractures? A. Applying knee splints. B. Elevating the foot of the bed. C. Hyperextending the client's palms. D. Performing shoulder range of motion exercises. Answer A. Applying knee splints prevents leg contractures by holding the joints in a position of function. Elevating the foot of the bed can't prevent contractures because the suction doesn't hold the joints in a position of function. Hyperextending a body part for an extended time is inappropriate because it can cause contractures. Performing shoulder range of motion exercises can prevent contractures in the shoulders, but not in the legs. Question 2. In a female client with burns on the legs, which nursing intervention helps prevent contractures? A. Applying knee splints. B. Elevating the foot of the bed. C. Hyperextending the client's palms. D. Performing shoulder range of motion exercises. Answer A. Applying knee splints prevents leg. Answer D. The rule of nines divides body surface area into percentages that, when totaled, equal 100%. According to the rule of nines, the arms account for 9% each, the anterior legs account for 9% each, and the anterior trunk accounts for 18%. Therefore, this client's burns cover 36% of the body surface area. Question 5. Which nursing intervention can help a client maintain the healthy skin? 
A. Keep the client well hydrated. B. Avoid bathing the client with mild soap. C. Remove adhesive tape quickly from the skin. D. Recommend wearing tight-fitting clothes in hot weather. Answer A. Keeping the client well hydrated helps prevent skin cracking and infection because intact healthy skin is the body's first line of defense. To help the client maintain healthy skin, the nurse should avoid strong or harsh detergents and should use mild soap. The nurse shouldn't remove adhesive tape quickly because this action can strip or scrape the skin. The nurse should recommend wearing loose fitting, not tight fitting, clothes in hot weather to promote heat loss by evaporation. Answer A. Applying knee splints prevents leg contractures by holding the joints in a position of function. Elevating the foot of the bed can't prevent contractures because this action doesn't hold the joints in a position of function. Hyperextending a body part for an extended time is inappropriate because it can cause contractures. Performing Answer D. The rule of nines divides body. Answer A. A scale is the characteristic secondary lesion occurring in psoriasis. Although crusts Ulcers and scars also are secondary lesions in skin disorders. They don't accompany psoriasis. Question 7. A female adult client with atopic dermatitis is prescribed a potent topical corticosteroid to be covered with an occlusive dressing. To address a potential client problem associated with this treatment, the nurse formulates the nursing diagnosis of risk for injury. To complete the nursing diagnosis statement, the nurse should add which related to phrase? A. Related to potential interactions between the topical corticosteroid and other prescribed drugs. B. Related to vasodilatory effects of the topical corticosteroid. C. Related to percutaneous absorption of the topical corticosteroid. D. Related to topical corticosteroid application to the face, neck, and intertriginous sites. Answer C. A potent topical corticosteroid may increase the client's risk for injury because it may be absorbed percutaneously, causing the same adverse effects as systemic corticosteroids. Topical corticosteroids aren't involved in significant drug interactions. These preparations cause vasoconstriction, not vasodilation. A potent topical corticosteroid really is prescribed for use on the face, neck, or intertriginous sites because application on these areas may lead to increased adverse effects. Answer D. The rule of nines divides body surface area into percentages that, when totaled, equal 100%. According to the rule of nines, the arms account for 9% each, the anterior legs account for 9% each, and the anterior trunk accounts for 18%. Therefore, this client's burns cover 36% of the body surface area. Answer A. A scale is the character. Answer A. Herpes simplex may be passed to the fetus transplacentally and, during early pregnancy, may cause spontaneous abortion or premature delivery. Genital herpes simplex lesions typically are painful, fluid-filled vesicles that ulcerate and heal within one to two weeks. Herpetic geritic conjunctivitis usually is unilateral and causes localized symptoms, such as conjunctivitis. A client with genital herpes lesions should avoid all sexual contact to prevent spreading the disease. Question 9. 
a female client with a severe staphylococcal infection is receiving the aminoglycoside gentamicin sulfate garomycin by the IV route. The nurse should assess the client for which adverse reaction to this drug. A. A plastic anemia. B. Autotoxicity. C. Cardiac arrhythmias. D. Seizures. Question 10. A male client is diagnosed with primary herpes genitalis. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Apply one applicator of turconazole intravaginally at bedtime for 7 days. B. Apply one applicator of shioconazole intravaginally at bedtime for 7 days. C. Apply a cycle of ointment to the lesions every 3 hours six times a day for seven days. D. Apply silconazole nitrate twice daily by massaging it gently into the lesions. <laughs> Question 9. A female client with a severe staphylococcal infection is receiving the aminoglycoside gentamicin sulfate garomycin by the IV route. The nurse should assess the client for which adverse reaction to this drug. A. A plastic anemia. B. Autotoxicity. C. Cardiac arrhythmias. And C. A. Herpes simplex may be passed to the fetus transplacentally and, during early pregnancy, may cause spontaneous abortion or premature delivery. Genital herpes simplex lesions typically are painful. Fluid-filled vesicles that ulcerate and heal within one to two weeks. Herpetic geritic conjunctivitis usually is unilateral and causes localized symptoms, such as conjunctivitis. A client with genital herpes lesions should avoid all sexual contact to prevent spreading the disease. <laughs> Answer C. When applying a topical agent, the nurse should begin at the midline and use long, even, outward, and downward strokes in the direction of hair growth. This application pattern reduces the risk of follicle irritation and skin inflammation. Question 5. Which nursing intervention can help a client maintain the healthy skin? A. Keep the client well hydrated. B. Avoid bathing the client with mild soap. C. Remove adhesive tape quickly from the skin. D. Recommend wearing tight-fitting clothes in hot weather. Answer A. When caring for a client. Answer B. Rings or donuts and to be used because they restrict circulation. Foam mattresses evenly distribute pressure. Gel pads redistribute with the client's weight. The water bed also distributes pressure over the entire surface. Question 13. Nurse Rudolph documents the presence of a scab on a client's deep wound. The nurse identifies this as which phrase of wound healing? A. Inflammatory. B. Migratory. C. Proliferative. D. Maturation. Question 5. Which nursing intervention can help a client maintain the healthy skin? A. Keep the client well hydrated. 
B. Avoid bathing the client with mild soap. C. Remove adhesive tape quickly from the skin. D. Recommend wearing tight-fitting clothes in hot weather. Question 2. In a female client with burns on the legs, which nursing intervention helps prevent contractures? A. Applying knee splints. B. Elevating the foot of the bed. C. Hyperextending the client's palms. D. Performing shoulder range of motion exercises. Question 9. A female client. Question 5. Which nursing intervention? Question 2. In a female client with burns on the legs, which nursing intervention helps prevent contractures? A. Applying knee splints. B. Elevating the foot of the bed. Question 10. A male client is diagnosed with primary herpes genitalis. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Apply one applicator of turconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. B. Apply one applicator of shioconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. C. Apply a cycle of ointment to the lesions every three hours, six times a day for seven days. D. Apply silconazole nitrate twice daily by massaging it. <laughs> Question 7. A female adult client with atopic dermatitis is prescribed a potent topical corticosteroid to be covered with an occlusive dressing. To address a potential client problem associated with this treatment, the nurse formulates the nursing diagnosis of risk for injury. To complete Question 17. A male client who has suffered a cerebrovascular accident CVA is too weak to move on his own. To help the client avoid pressure ulcers, the nurse should a. Turn him frequently. b. Perform passive range of motion ROM exercises. c. Reduce the client's fluid intake. d. Encourage the client to use a footboard. <laughs> Question 10. A male client is diagnosed with primary herpes genitalis. 
which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Apply one applicator of tuconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. B. Apply one applicator of shioconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. C. Apply a cycle of ointment to the lesions every three hours, six times a day for seven days. D. Apply silconazole nitrate twice daily by massaging it gently into the lesions. Question 13. Nurse Rudolph documents the presence of a scab on a client's deep wound. The nurse identifies this as which phrase of wound healing? A. Inflammatory. B. Migratory. C. Proliferative. D. Maturation. Question 7. A female adult. Answer C. When applying a topical agent, the nurse should begin at the midline and use long, even, outward, and downward strokes in the direction of head. Question 19. While in a skilled nursing facility, a male client contracted scabies, which is diagnosed the day after discharge. The client is living at her daughter's home, where six other persons are living. During the visit to the clinic, she asks a staff nurse, what should my family do? The most accurate response from the nurse is, A. All family members will need to be treated. B. If someone develops symptoms, tell him to see a physician right away. C. Just be careful not to share linens and towels with family members. D. After you're treated. Family members won't be at risk for contracting scabies. Question 13. Nurse Rudolph documents the presence of a scab on a client's deep wound. The nurse identifies this as which phrase of wound healing? A. Inflammatory. B. Migratory. C. Proliferative. D. Maturation. Question 10. A male client is diagnosed with primary herpes genitalis. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Apply one applicator of tuconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. B. Apply one applicator of shioconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. C. Apply a cycle of ointment to the lesions every three hours, six times a day for seven days. Answer A. Applying knee splints prevents leg contractures by holding the joints in a position of function. Elevating the foot of the bed can't prevent contractures because this action doesn't hold the joints in a position of function. Hyperextending a body part for an extended time is inappropriate because it can cause contractures. Performing shoulder range of motion exercises can prevent contractures in the shoulders, but not in the legs. Question 21. A female client with second and third degree burns on the arms receives autografts. Two days later. The nurse finds the client doing arm exercises. The nurse knows that this client should avoid exercise because it may a. dislodge the autografts, b. increase edema in the arms, c. increase the amount of scarring, d. decrease circulation to the fingers. Question 13. Nurse Rudolph. Question 10. A male client is diagnosed with primary herpes genitalis. Which instruction should the nurse provide? A. Apply one applicator of tuconazole intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. B.
Answer A. Applying knee splints prevent sl Answer B. To prevent the spread of scabies in other hospitalized clients, the nurse should isolate the client's bed linens until the client is no longer infectious, usually 24 hours after treatment begins. Other required precautions include using good hand-washing technique and wearing gloves when applying the pedicle aside and during all contact with the client. Although the nurse should notify the nurse in the day surgery unit of the client's condition, a scabies epidemic is unlikely because scabies is spread through skin or sexual contact. This client doesn't require enteric precautions because the mites aren't found on feces. Question 23. Dr. Smith prescribes an emollient for a client with pruritus of recent onset. The client asks why the emollient should be applied immediately after a bath or shower. How should the nurse respond? A. This makes the skin feel soft. B. This prevents evaporation of water from the hydrated epidermis. C. This minimizes cracking of the dermis. D. This prevents inflammation of the skin. Question 10. A male client is di Question 13. Nurse Rudolph documents the presence of a scab on a client's deep wound. The nurse identifies this as which phrase of wound healing? A. Inflammatory. B. Migratory. C. Proliferative. D. Maturation. Question 21. A female client. Question 23. Dr. Smith prescribes an emollient for a client with pruritus of recent onset. The client asks why the emollient should be applied immediately after a bath or shower. How should the nurse respond? A. This makes the skin feel soft. B. This prevents evaporation of water from the hydrated epidermis. Question 19. While in a Question 21. A female client with second and third degree burns on the arms receives autographs. Two days later, the nurse finds the client doing arm exercises. The nurse knows that this client should avoid exercise because it may a. dislodge the autographs, b. increase edema in the arms, c. increase the amount of scarring, d. Question 23. Dr. Smith. Question 27. A male client is diagnosed with gonorrhea. When teaching the client about this disease, the nurse should include which instruction? 
A. Avoid sexual intercourse until you've completed treatment, which takes 14 to 21 days. B. Wash your hands thoroughly to avoid transferring the infection to your eyes. C. If you have intercourse before treatment ends, tell sexual partners of your status and have them wash well after intercourse. D. If you don't get treatment, you may develop meningitis and suffer widespread central nervous system CNS damage. <laughs> Question 19. While in a skilled nursing facility, a male client contracted scabies, which is diagnosed the day after discharge. The client is living at her daughter's home, where six other persons are living. During her visit to the clinic, she asks a staff nurse, What should my family do? The most accurate response from the nurse is A. All family members will need to be treated. B. If someone develops symptoms, tell him to see a physician right away. C. Just be careful not to share linens and towels with family members. D. After you're treated, family members won't be. Question 28. A female client with atopic dermatitis is prescribed medication for phototherapy. The nurse teaches the client about the importance of protecting the skin from ultraviolet light before drug administration and for eight hours afterward and stresses the need to protect the eyes. After administering medication for phototherapy, the client must protect the eyes for a. 4 hours b. 8 hours c. 24 hours d. 48 hours Question 17. A male client. Question 27. A male client is diagnosed with gonorrhea. When teaching the client about this disease, the nurse should include which instruction? A. Avoid sexual intercourse until you've completed three answers. E. A potent topical corticosteroid may increase the client's risk for injury because it may be absorbed percutaneously causing the same adverse effects as systemic corticosteroids. Topical corticosteroids aren't involved in significant drug interactions. These preparations cause vasoconstriction, not vasodilation. A potent topical corticosteroid jelly is prescribed for use on the face, neck, or intertriginous sites because application on these areas may lead to increased adverse Question 19. While in a skin. Question 28. A female client with atopic dermatitis is prescribed medication for phototherapy. The nurse teaches the client about the importance of protecting the skin from ultraviolet light before drug administration. Question 17. A male client who has suffered a cerebrovascular accident CVA is too weak to move on his own. To help the client avoid pressure ulcers, the nurse should a. Turn him frequently b. Perform passive range of motion rom exercises c. Question 10. A male client is done. Answer Z. A potent topical corticosteroid may increase.